here we will talk about the next respiratory uh, organ and the type of respiration based on that. This is seen in case of arthropods, especially like uh, insects. The respiration is known as tracheary respiration or tracheal respiration. The structure or the tubes which help are called tracheal tubes or tracheary or sometimes they are also just known as tracheae. These are tubes which are made up of a substance which is chitin like. We'll take the structure. An example where we see this kind of uh, respiration is in insects. And we will take the example of cockroach to understand how exactly these uh, so, or these tubes are arranged. In the body of cockroach, there are three thoracic segments. So this is prothorax, then mesothorax and metathorax. And ten abdominal segments. So this is the abdominal part. And there are 10 segments. So if we draw those 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 abdominal segments. So this is thorax part and this is the abdominal or abdomen. Now these tubes, they have an opening. The opening is known as spiracle. So we are drawing the uh, system separately, how which tube opens into what and then we will place it here. So this opening is called spiracle. There are 10 spiracles. Two in the thoracic region and eight in the abdominal region. So let us draw these uh, spiracles. One which is in the thorax is at the junction of pro and meso. So here it would be that opening and the second is between meso and metathorax. So there are two thoracic. So spiracles are two thoracic thoracic and eight abdominal spiracles are there. We have drawn two and the same are going to be on this side. Each spiracle opens into a slightly swollen structure which is known as ampulla. So here also each spiracle would open into this ampulla. And let us also draw these eight abdominal and these eight abdominal are in the first eight abdominal segments. So here is going to be one in the first segment, one in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. That means ninth and tenth segments do not have spiracles. We will also write certain important things about this. Total ten spiracles and let us just put abdomen here, two thoracic and eight abdominal. Out of this, the first thoracic and the first abdominal, they always remain open. First thoracic and first abdominal are always open whereas the others open only when the inhalation has to take place and then after the gas the gases have gone in they can be closed so only opening is seen during in and uh, intake or outlet of the gas that is inhalation and exhalation rest of the time they remain close. This ampulla 
leads into a tube and this tube then shows branchings. This tube is known as the trachea. And that is how the name given to this system of respiration that is tracheary system or tracheal system. These tubes are wider and then they divide into finer branches which are known as the tracheoles. So this is trache and these are tracheoles. Each tracheole has a blunt end and it reaches up to the tissue. That means this would go to the area where there would be cells or tissues. Similarly here also it would go to the area where there are cells or tissues. That means the air which is taken in ultimately reaches up to the cells. There is one more important thing here. At the junction where these tracheoles arise, there is a large cell. This cell is known as tracheolar cell. The function of this tracheolar cell is to secrete a fluid which is known as tracheolar fluid. Let us place all these things here. So here we have this ampulla in case of all abdominal segments also. Then the tubes. Let us use another color so that we are able to distinguish various parts. The trache start from here and they join. When they join, a long tube is formed. That means there is a trunk on two sides. Same thing is going to be on this side. So there is one main trunk here. This branch is known as tracheolar trunk. This is the main where all of these they are going to join. So one is on this side, other is on the other side. So there are two lateral trunks which are running. And if we draw just the trunk here, these trunks are also connected with each other. So the air which is taken in through the spiracles actually goes everywhere in the body. But if we just see that one part, the trachea or the trache, they open or divide into finer branches which are known as tracheoles and tracheoles reach up to the tissue. This is made up of a Cutin-like substance called intima. Trache are made up of a cutin-like substance called intima. And this intima lines this branch or this tube to prevent it from collapsing. Only thing is the lining is not uniform. The lining is in the form of a spring or spiral. So this cutin like material lines this so that these tubes do not collapse. This spiral thickening is known as tenidy. The material is in dima, but that spiral thickening is known as tenidy. Similarly, these tracheoles, they are also lined by a substance. But here, the lining is more or less uniform. So there is lining like this, which we are drawing with the blue pen. And this is thickening, again, to prevent it from collapsing. And this is known as, or this material is called trachin. Let us quickly go over it. The opening of the tracheary system is a tiny structure, a pore or an opening which is known as spiracle. Total there are 10 spiracles, 2 in the thoracic region and 8 in the abdominal region. First thoracic and first abdominal, they always remain open. Others can be open or closed according to the requirement. 
The spiracle leads into a swollen structure which is called ampulla. So here we see all these ampullae. A tube arises from the ampulla. This is known as the tracheary tube which is the main tube. It divides into finer branches which are called tracheoles. At the junction where these tracheoles are being produced, there is a cell which is known as tracheolar cell and this cell is going to produce a fluid known as tracheolar fluid. All the ampullae lead into one common duct which is the main trunk. So one is on this side, the other is going to be on the other side. Now, how does this respiratory process take place? Respiration is again completed in two steps. Inhalation and exhalation. We know inhalation is taking in of the air. The muscles which help in this process are known as Tergosternal muscles. If you remember the structure of a cockroach or these insects, their body is made up of chitinous plates. The upper, that is dorsal one, is known as terga. The lower one is called sternum, and there are pleura on the side. So the muscles which are helping in this process, they are attached from tergum to sternum. So this is tergum, this is sternum. And the muscles are here. These muscles are known as tergo sternal muscles. Now when these muscles contract, when the muscles contract, these chitinous plates, they will be brought closer. That means the volume inside decreases. When these plates are brought closer, the inner space becomes smaller. If volume decreases, the pressure is going to increase and air rushes from higher pressure to lower. That is from the body, from within the body or from these tubes, the air is going to come out through spiracles. So here the air is coming out because of contraction of these muscles. That means exhalation is an active process. So exhalation is active. And how does this take place? Targosternal muscles contract. Due to this contraction, the volume decreases. And as volume decreases, pressure increases and the air from within the tube rushes out and this exhalation process is controlled or takes place due to contraction of the muscle. Whenever muscles contract we call it active process. So in cockroaches exhalation is active. Now what happens when inhalation has to take place? The same muscles they are going to relax. When they contracted the tergum and sternal plates, they come closer. Now they relax. So when the muscles relax, these plates move back to their original position. Original position means now the volume is increasing. Volume increases means the pressure decreases as compared to surrounding. So air from surrounding comes into the tubes through the spiracles. So this is a passive process. And here exhalation is active. It is just reverse of what happens in our case. In our case, inhalation is active and exhalation is passive. Now, when inhalation takes place, the air rushes or goes in through the spiracle and through these tubes, it reaches up to the cells and gaseous exchange takes place here. When the cockroaches are not respiring through this position because this contraction of muscle takes place only when they are moving. So if a cockroach is not moving, it is sitting at its one, uh, at one position, then these muscles are not contracting. In that case, there is no inhalation or exhalation. So what happens is, this tracheolar cell, it secretes the fuel, sorry, it secretes the fluid and this fluid 
fills in this complete tube. Everywhere there is fluid. And this fluid comes even closer to this opening. That means now the exchange of gases can take place between the air and the fluid directly. And that oxygen then slowly is going to diffuse up to the cells. As soon as the insect starts moving, the complete fluid is withdrawn into this tracheolar cell. So respiration, breathing or inhalation, exhalation. Inhalation is passive in case of cockroaches. If we go over it, what happens during exhalation? There are muscles which connect the upper chitinous plate with the lower chitinous, that is sternum with the sternum. The muscles are known as turbosternal muscles. These turbosternal muscles when contract, these plates are brought closer. When they come closer, the volume within the uh, body decreases. When volume decreases, pressure increases and the air is going to rush from higher pressure, that is from the tubes, to the surrounding. This is called exhalation. But here the muscle contraction is taking place. So we call this process active. Just reverse. When the muscles relax, these plates come back to their normal position. Volume increases. Pressure decreases. And air from higher pressure, that is from the air or surrounding, goes into the tube. So here no muscle contraction. That is why inhalation is passive in case of these insects. What exactly is happening? If it is normal inhalation and exhalation, air would go in, it would reach up to the tip of these tracheolar or tracheoles and then exchange of gases would directly take place. But when the muscles are not contracting or in other words we can say if the insect is still, it is not moving, then the cell secretes a fluid which is known as tracheolar fluid and it fills all the tubes, comes up to the spiracle. An exchange of gases takes place between the fluid and the air. Oxygen diffuses in and that diffused oxygen is then transported to the tissue. As soon as inhalation exhalation starts, this complete fluid will be withdrawn by this cell and the air would again reach up to the tip of these tracheoles. So this is tracheary system. What we have to remember here is the number of spiracles and the ones which always remain open. That is the first thoracic and first abdominal. Others can be closed when this inhalation and exhalation is not taking place. So tracheal system or trache as the structure seen in case of insects. Now the next one is through gifts.